Oh, well, it's no secret diabetes is a big problem in the valley. One in three people in our area have it, and a growing number of children and teenagers are also being diagnosed. Joining us to talk about a new clinical trial is Dr. Lisa Trevino and Dr. Surya Mulukutlet from DHR Health. Thank you so much for joining us, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Before we get to all the details on the clinical trial, let's talk about the growing number of cases uh, with teenagers and children and diabetes. How concerned are you about this? Very. Uh, we don't know exactly why, but we have picked up increased signals through multiple research studies, not just in the valley, but across the country, uh, that the incidence of diabetes is increasing, that be type 1 and type 2. And it really doesn't matter the reasons. Some people say obesity, nutrition, not exercising as much. And even if you look at type 1 diabetes, which is the typical one we talk about as juvenile and onset, COVID might be playing a role. We're not 100% sure what the triggers are. But whenever you diagnose somebody with a chronic illness, when they're 40, 50, 60, it's very difficult, much less when you say they're 10 or 15 years old and you're sort of saying this is what you have to look forward to for the next few decades. It's very difficult, and so it's very concerning. And that's why you all are getting ready for this new study, this new clinical trial, which you're going to introduce a new medication to these uh, children, to these teenagers. Tell us about this study and about this new medication. So this medication is a Frizza, and it's currently approved in adults. And so the whole idea is to be able to approve this medication, which is an inhalable form of insulin in children. And, so, and can you yeah, show absolutely, it? So, yeah. I don't know if we can get Go a clear ahead, yeah. shot of this. So this is what looks it like is. Looks like a whistle. Yeah, it does look like yeah, a whistle. It so does. it looks like something that can be easily used. Yeah. And so in this study, who qualifies? Is there a certain criteria? There is. And, and I think you brought up a good point. And the whole idea is to make it as uh, easy and non-invasive for the kids and the parents. Um, the, we're looking for children between the ages of 4 and 17 um, that have type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Um, and, and like we mentioned, we're trying to see if we can approve this inhalable version of insulin in kids, similar to what adults use now. And so what are you hoping to learn overall in this study? What is your goal, the hope? So I think one of our biggest hopes together, and obviously with, the, with many researchers across the country, is if we can get improved compliance with the use and the treatment of the use of medication for these kids with diabetes, uh, effectiveness, uh, ease of use, you know, making a family's life easier. Um, having this in your pocket as opposed to walking around with injectables and having to refrigerate the medication. You can go on vacation, it's a lot more obscure, you know, you can boost the confidence of a kid that has diabetes. So effectiveness, safety, uh, and again, you know, making it easy as possible for the child with diabetes. Right. It's not a new medication, right. it's just a new way a to new give way, an exactly. old medication. Right. Mm -hmm. And so in this study, what is the time commitment? You know, how long will the study go for? So the study is a year long, um, and I think within the first month, the child and the parents will have to come on, come on to maybe the clinic every two weeks. And then after that, it's once a month throughout the duration of the year. Short visits coming in, making sure you're okay, making sure there's no adverse events, making sure nothing's changed from visit to visit. Um, but that's also the beauty of being on study. You have more frequent follow-ups closer attention to you and, and how you're doing and proceeding with the medication and responding to the medication throughout the trial. And for those who do qualify and sign up, what can they expect? I think they can expect a lot more hands-on communication with Dr. Molokotla, um, our research investigator also, Dr. Uh, Adrian Casciato, more one-on-one, -on -one, more communication, more closely following up. Um, and, and again, making sure that you're responding as expected. Um, I think it's important to also know that you know for one to one that either this patient will be um, randomized if you will to the treatment or the standard of care but ultimately they'll all be rece receiving the new inhalable version. And how many participants are you looking for because you said from 4 to 17 how many are you looking for? As many as we can get yeah I mean there's no there's no cap um, but we are against you know it's a national study DHR and the Valley are very fortunate to be involved so the timeline's not necessarily ours, and I think they, the, the national sponsors want to try to get as many people as they can through the pipeline by December, because they would like to get this out to the masses. Yep. And where can people go for more information and to sign up if they're interested? They can certainly call us at the Research Institute, 956-362-2390, um, um, or reach out via our website, dhrresearch.org. Okay, so you heard it, folks. They are looking to get participants from the age of 4 to 17 to sign up before December? 
if possible. If yeah. possible. Okay. Well, we thank you so much for joining thank us and you. sharing that important information on diabetes. Again, education and awareness is key to fighting this disease. And we're going to be right back.